Hey, it's Drybear. Since the launch of the first Ascendant, there has been many, many, many discussions on which weapons are the best and how to calculate them and all of that. And there has been a weapon that has been up and down in the charts, and that is the Tamer, a machine gun that started out as the best weapon in the game, has since been uh, being insulted across the internet and online. But today I wanted to do a more in-depth analysis on the weapon and do an updated theoretical DPS prospect for the weapon and talk about its strengths and weaknesses and how you might go about editing it as well to make it the weapon of your dreams. So this is the final numbers for the Tamer. It is the theoretical DPS maxed out with four golden rerolls, fully maxed out, fully catalyzed, fully activated, is 832,000 DPS. And if you saw my video yesterday going over Eternal Willpower, Eternal Willpower is actually at uh, 748. So the Tamer actually in raw DPS does slightly outperform the Eternal Willpower. And there's some other things that we need to talk about around the feel of the weapon and what your preferences are for playing the game. But if you're just shooting a target that you don't miss and you're unloading ammo, the Tamer does do more damage than the Eternal Willpower on the theoretical. And this is going to be the stat spread for these weapons. This is a weapon. All of the machine guns can run the Mental Focus module. Mental Focus is a module that only really works if you have a lot of rounds in a single match magazine because the buff that you get for building up that module is lost when you reload. So overall, these are the stat spreads, but let's look at the weapon itself. Now this calculation that I'm going to use on all the weapons takes into account an accuracy on weak point of about 30%. I've gone through and tested 30%, 50%, 70%, different thresholds of how accurate you can be on weak point to see how weak point scales. And keep in mind that weak point is currently not affecting any bonus elemental damage unless that elemental damage is a unique passive like the Thunder, thunder Cage. The explosion explosion from Thunder Cage is uh, scaled by elemental damage and weak point, but it, uh, the bonus to elemental damage you get on weapons, even from the enhancement, is not getting the effect of weak point, so that's not scaling up there. But when you compare the Eternal Willpower and the Tamer together, they have some pros and cons that put them apart. If you're looking at just raw DPS, the Tamer is still better than the Eternal Willpower as far as overall output, but there's some preferences that go into that as well. Number one, an unmodified Eternal willpower does have a pretty high recoil it's going to take you off screen quite a lot and so some of this comes down to personal preference and we'll go back to the build sheet to talk about what you would want to swap out based on personal preference some people just want the optimal dps and they're willing to just you know run their mouth run their mouse or run their controller in the right way to avoid the recoil right if you've played shooters before this is with full recoil you can just adjust for the recoil pull it down and even with loss of accuracy if it you are fine co making constant fine adjustments adjustments to shoot with that, then you may go for more damage output. Now with the Tamer, the big downside with the Tamer is how slow you move. Not only does it make you slower, but you can see how slow my, my strafing is. And keep in mind, to get full value out of Mental Focus, you want to use your whole magazine, which means you're going to be doing this for long periods of time. So yes, you will get more DPS out of the Tamer, but there are some downsides for doing so. Number one, the movement. If you're running a character like Sharon or like Bunny, you're not going to be spending the whole time walking slowly like John Souls in a Dark Souls invasion up towards the enemy because you want to be moving around and using your abilities. So there becomes a time when you start modifying these when you want to start looking at things like recoil reduction or even accuracy increase because it's going to make the weapon feel better for you and for your overall experience because ultimately for me if you're playing a grindy game that you're just doing the same thing over and over the number one thing more important than any theoretical dps or what anyone else says on the internet is primarily the feel of the weapon and how much you enjoy using it on a minute to minute basis while you're grinding out that three percent drop to get the right blueprint that you want so let's look back at this chart and i've built this out to be as flexible as possible for people that have preferences my core module set like this this ideal setup down here in the bottom right is going to be the optimal dps output for the weapon you want rifling reinforcement and action reaction that's going to take your your firearm attack and your atk grouping category you do actually want weak point sight and have aiming on this weapon not every weapon scales well with weak point even with low weak point accuracy this one just happens to remember that weak point is one of the global scalers in the first descendant which means that it it applies to your dps output one to one there's no diminishing returns there's no reduction there's no calculation to be made if you add 20 percent weak point attack to your weapon you will get 20 percent more damage output the only asterisk there is that it won't apply to proc based elemental bonuses like weak point won't apply to the elemental enhancement modules for example or if you reroll elemental damage on your reroll stats it won't weak point 
it won't apply to that. But outside of that, your DPS will be one to one. It's one of the global scalers. So if you can use it, it is usually a very good thing to use. However, even though this does have a base crit rate of about around 10%, you're going to get a lot more value because you're going to be shooting a lot more out of crit damage than you do from crit chance. Crit chance is kind of a scary stat in this game. I've heard many people uh, have the misconception that uh, you take the biggest stat on a weapon and scale it up and that's how you make it better. That's just simply not how math works. That's not how the calculation works for the overall output of this weapon specifically or any weapon in the game. So concentration priority and better concentration are going to give you the most value from that. And then you want to run fire rate up, another global scaler just like weak point, and expand weapon charge. This gives you more rounds and allows you to get more benefit out of mental focus. The more more rounds you add to your magazine, the more value you get out of mental focus. And in this case, you do want to scale up rounds and you want to roll rounds on your passive as well. So up here in the top right corner, you can see the reroll stat priority. We have stat priority on which stats are the most important. So if you have to make a choice between modules, that's what you would look for is the stat priority. And then the reroll priority is how much value you would get out of a maxed out golden version of each of these stats. Your best stat for this, because we're going to run mental focus, is rounds. If you don't want to run mental focus and you want to run sharp precision shot or real life fighter you can probably drop rounds down under crit damage but if you're going to run mental focus you should run rounds as your reroll then the bonus flat versus colossi or versus a specific faction then firearm attack then flat elemental damage then crit damage and then weak point and crit chance are by far the lowest and you don't really want to roll those on your weapon if you can help it so those are the stat priorities there in the top right corner and then on the left side of the screen i've shown all of the damage output modules and how much they provide to your damage output the reason i do this is so that you can jump down in the list to the next best one if you don't want to run something so if you don't want to run mental focus because you don't want to be holding on to the whole clip you want to run real life fighter because you'd much prefer to be focusing on the weak point to scale that up you can run it those are about the same in optimal situations sharp precision shot is not too far behind because this weapon fires for a long period of time you need to be firing like a, t a TTE of five seconds or greater to get full value out of SPS. And so in order to do that, machine guns are a great fit. Action and reaction, one of the best mods in the entire game. I feel like they really need to bring up like slow art, antimatter round, pinpoint shot, sharpshooter. They just fa they just pale in comparison to action and reaction in almost every possible situation. Elemental enhancement is great here because elemental enhancement is, yes, it's a bonus elemental effect, but it's scaled off of your firearm attack. So any firearm that has firearm attack is their highest value which means you're going to be loading lots and lots of firearm attack rifling reinforcement action and reaction mental focus all of these increase your firearm attack you're going to re-roll firearm attack firearm attack it's going to keep making elemental enhancement better and better and better versus some of the gun barrels or the elemental priorities which are based on elemental percent scaling they're not even on this list because they don't, they're not where near as good, but elemental enhancement, the blue one is great, especially if you can run it against an enemy that is weak to the element that you're using. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Then we have rifling reinforcement and sweeping squad is okay. The only thing that's cool about sweeping squad is as long as there are ads in a fight, you can keep the buff up 100%. It's very easy to maintain the buff from sweeping squad. So if you're someone that doesn't want to focus on hitting the weak point consistently for real life fighter, or you don't want to focus on using your whole magazine without dropping stacks from mental focus or you don't want to you know try to fire for as long as possible for sharp precision you just want to play the dang game and stop shooting when you want sweeping squad is a great option it's just going to be nowhere near as good as the others because they're conditional slow art antimatter round pinpoint shot and sharpshooter share a category with action and reaction this grouping here so they're not going to be able to be slotted in there and they're simply worse but if you wanted to say you didn't want the negative effect from action and reaction you could run these instead the fire rate negative is not enough to overcome the firearm attack increase for slow art and same thing goes for these other here fire rate from both bullet rain and fire rate up are good fire rates fire rate up is a little bit better because it does give you more and no negative and then have aiming and better concentration concentration priority weak point side all of those scale really well with the tamer but the main reason why i like including a lot of different options and perspectives with these readouts is that it helps you understand what you would alter to make the build your own i see a lot of people that get caught up in whatever the most optimal dps output what is and they play that way but also I feel like most people are just coming home from work and playing the game to have fun and enjoying the game for what it is and some people don't like this 
You know, they don't like having to deal with so much recoil. They don't have to like having to deal with so much negative accuracy. They don't like having to deal with reloading so much. And it's something that bothers them in their gameplay experience, which is meant for recreation in the first place. So if you decided to, if you really wanted to for these, you could actually swap out, like just pick the lowest contributing DPS option for here. In this case would be better cons or would be concentration priority. You could swap that out for, you know, Hawkeye if you wanted to get more accuracy. You could swap it out for vibration if you wanted more recoil coil recovery you could swap it out for any number of things that make the gun feel better and this way you can figure out how to minimally impact the dps in a way that makes everything feel better to you but as it stands right now if you're shooting a target that you can hit consistently and you have maximum dps set up on your weapon the tamer does in fact outperform internal willpower in overall dps but we know it's a bigger equation than that and it's also a subjective equation on what you like best so i'll be moving on to python that's going to be more of an elemental a discussion is going to take a little more effort to get that all set up and i probably will revisit the thunder cage as well to talk about some of those things here but i wanted to put out a tamer specific video because it's been asked for a lot i covered tamer as part of the other mgs but i wanted to do a spotlight on the tamer specifically and do a readout on the numbers so we can compare it to the other weapons we're working on if you found value in today's video leave a like down below leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things